leaving Baltimore it's a beautiful day we planned it that way always checking the weather we enjoyed our time in Baltimore at the Anchorage Marina we're gonna go under the uh, F Scott Key Bridge here We got about six knots of wind so we're motoring and actually probably be motoring through the night we're gonna head north of the Chesapeake and go through the C&D Canal Chesapeake and Delaware Canal so we are coming into the C&D Canal the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal which uh, joins the upper part of the Chesapeake with the Delaware River. It's a nice day. We are uh, in the ship's channel. Uh, obviously keeping an eye out for ships. Because uh, right outside the ship's channel, we got lots of fishing floats. So we are headed up here we're pushing it with both engines running because we're trying to uh, time the tide and daylight so the tide is starting to turn in our favor right now so we're going to get a little boost from the current and we want to get through the canal in daylight see how it goes we only have one bridge to worry about and that's a railroad bridge that most of the time is up we shall see So we are about halfway up the CND Canal. You can see it's fairly narrow through here, but the water is fairly deep right over to the uh, shore. We're uh, making about eight and a half knots right now. We were making over nine knots earlier because of the uh, current, so we timed it so we would be uh, on the rising tide and so the current is in our favor. So we are taking advantage of that. We should hit the Delaware River probably around seven. It's about five o'clock now, so we got about another two hours to go. It is a beautiful day. So this is the railroad bridge over the C&D Canal and we just had a train and so they are now raising the bridge to let us through which is awfully nice of them. We just timed it so we met a train, you know, it's just like commuting to work and the train gets in your way. It's about half up. They have raised the bridge and we're headed on through. We went from 45 feet of clearance to 130. Plenty for our 72 foot mast. So this is the Reedy Point Bridge. This is the last bridge heading east on the uh, C&D Canal. So about 30 minutes after this bridge we'll be out in the Delaware River and we're turned to a more southerly direction to head out into the Atlantic. Continue our voyage to New York City. So we are on the Delaware River now and it's getting pretty close to sunset. So we're just going to kind of mosey on down here. Betsy's 
look it out here. We're just going to mosey on down the Delaware tonight and tomorrow morning we'll be coming out into the Atlantic. Light, wind is very light, about five, six knots, so we're still motoring. We're headed up the east coast, just getting ready to pass Atlantic City. It's uh, pretty calm conditions. We uh, motored down the Delaware last night. It was fun, kind of uh, challenging to navigate in the dark, no moon, and uh, you know lots of ship traffic and shallow water. But uh, we successfully arrived in the Atlantic early this morning. And we're now motoring up the Atlantic coast in very, very calm seas. You can see Atlantic City. You can see Atlantic City out there in the distance. We've got a little bit of a swell from the south. So we've got a little rocking going on. And we're supposed to get some additional wind other boats out here with us and so we're hoping that we'll be able to put the sails up here soon Betsy was on shift early this morning and she saw some dolphins Hopefully the wind will fill in and we'll be able to do some sailing a little bit later. So we have our head sail up and we are slowly sailing downwind. At this point of sail we probably could get the main up too but we're only supposed to have this wind for a few hours and we're actually needing to slow down. We find ourselves in this situation a lot. <laughs> I guess that's conservative planning, but uh, if we speed up by putting the main up, which if we put the main up, we'd probably end up doing six or seven knots we could get to New York Harbor before daylight, which is not what we want to do since we've never been there before. You can see Atlantic City is moving towards our stern. They had an air show there today, but uh, we were too far away really to see anything. So we're doing about three and a half knots. Should be in the New York early tomorrow morning. So it's uh, about 8.30 at night. And, uh, excuse me, 10.30 at night. And I'm on watch. We're coming up into New York. We will be hitting the outer um, reaches of the harbor in about uh, 10 hours. So right about uh, a little after dawn. And a lot of people ask us, well, what do you guys do at night? And <laughs> basically, we just keep on going. And uh, they're like, well, how can you see anything? And you really can't. We have to keep on going at night and you can see, you can't see much. You can kind of see the nav lights reflected up there, but uh, not a lot of light out here. 
no moon tonight. Every once in a while you can see some sort of a light on shore, a navigation light out, but uh, basically if it doesn't have a light on it, we're going to run into it, which is not great, but if you're going to sail long distances, that's pretty much what you have to do. So another 10 hours and we'll be heading into New York Harbor. So we are coming into New York City Harbor. You can see the uh, skyline over there through the, the schmutz. You can see Brooklyn and then you can also see some of the buildings of Manhattan behind Brooklyn. And the Verrazano Narrows Bridge that we're going to be going underneath. Entering harbors like this, the challenge is staying out of the way of the uh, large commercial vessels. Like this one right here. He's going to be uh, passing us. And that's where the AIS really comes in handy because it tells us what our time to closest point of approach is and what our distances are. It really makes it a lot easier and, and they can also see us on there so everybody uh, can coordinate and there's no misunderstandings plus they're traveling in a designated ship channel that we stay out of and that keeps us uh, keeps us all safe and that's about as close as we like to get to the large commercial vessels That ship is uh, really large. That's where the Mylar balloons end up after you let them go. Out here in the water. Now we're passing through the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Looks pretty busy for a Thursday morning. For quite a few years, this was the longest span suspension bridge in the world, until 1981, actually. It's built in the 50s and commissioned in the 60s. Now we are headed straight back there. We're going to park near Statue of Liberty. We're coming into the uh, upper harbor and there is Manhattan. We are headed over there towards the Statue of Liberty. And there is the Statue of Liberty. And it's a fisherman. We got to steer clear of the uh, tour boats over here. They go around all the time. Looks like these guys are moving out or not. So this is our anchorage for a couple nights. We are front row seat for Manhattan. There's a Freedom Tower right there. And off to our starboard is Ellis Island. And on the other side of Ellis Island is Statue of Liberty. We decided to anchor over here because it's not quite as much of a zoo as it is at Statue of Liberty. I mean, you can hear the helicopters. So Statue of Liberty is a very, very busy place. And then I guess this is a viewing stand for boat races when they have them out here. So a beautiful view of the New York City skyline. So 
just keeps going. So we were up at four in the morning because we're going to make the trip through the East River over to Port Washington this morning. And we have been given local knowledge that the trip is best made or started two hours after low tide. This is to uh, try and catch the currents in a positive manner through there because uh, they can get pretty intense up to five knots in some places so we'll be leaving in about uh, half an hour up in the anchor and uh, should be about a three and a half hour trip over to uh, Port Washington and we'll re-anchor over there. So we have left our we had left our anchorage by the Statue of Liberty. We're actually over here Ellis Island and we were over here by that viewing stand over there so we're headed up the East River not quite daybreak yet headed up the East River right at daybreak gotten some information from locals that this is the right time to go through the East River to avoid adverse currents Let's see how it goes so we are on the East River and we have uh, the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge right in front of us. I'm going to go under those first. So we are uh, coming up on Rikers Island. We just went through Hell's Gate and uh, right now we've got uh, 10 knots over ground. and 5.5 through the water uh, we've seen the current we've seen the current as high as six knots through here so local knowledge was very helpful because we're going with it obviously we had six knots against us that would be very very bad you can see how roiled up the water is It's a beautiful day though. Coming towards the end of our passage through the East River. We're going under our last bridge here, the Throg's Neck Bridge. We still have about a two knot current to our favor. Pretty, uh, pretty uneventful trip made much easier by local knowledge. We're entering Manhasset Bay where we're planning on anchoring for a little while. Town of uh, Port Washington is in here. And it's about 8:30 in the morning. We had a nice, successful run through the East River, and yeah, got Saturday, so fishermen are coming out. And other people are bringing their boats out to enjoy the day. So we are in Manhasset Bay. We're anchored out. You can see some moorings in there. These are the city moorings over here, which we'll probably pick one of those up next week. And that's uh, Port Washington right there. It's a nice little bay.
nice little bay. So we've been here in uh, Port Washington for a couple days in uh, Manhasset Bay, New York. And it's a pretty nice anchorage. Sun's just coming up this morning. It's pretty calm. We're anchored in about uh, 10 feet of water at low tide and about 15 feet of water at high tide. Had some thunderstorms last night. Wind's been coming up in the afternoon a little bit. You can see there's quite a few moorings here, but we're on anchor just outside the mooring field. When the wind comes up in the afternoon, the uh, anchor gets a little bouncy because there's quite a bit of fetch. It's a good sized bay, but pretty much uh, all that is available for anchorage, so it's a nice anchorage. Been into town a few times. There's some nice restaurants. And today, we're going to catch the train into New York City and go see a play and have some lunch at Central Park. So that should be fun. So thanks for watching our uh, voyage from Baltimore to Port Washington, New York. We're going to be here for a little while and see some of New York City. And then we are going to head up to Maine. So uh, look forward to seeing you again on the channel. Please hit the like button and subscribe so that we can put more videos out there. Take care.